that we're going to start in a couple of minutes. We're waiting for our elder to arrive uh, to, pro to properly open the, uh, the ceremony and also one of our, uh, our co-lead artists uh, coordinator and uh, we won't be able to do anything until they get here. So please be patient. Um, this is a, a very large mural. If you like, you can take some time to walk around the mural. Uh, there are many, many stories there and uh, I'm sure that you'll have a wonderful time even conversing with the artwork. I'll see you shortly. Kristen Wong Tam, it is an absolute honor and delight to be here with you today. Um, we always need to start off by thanking our hosts, uh, the people of Mississauga New Credit. Um, you know, behind you stands a very significant piece of art, and it's not necessarily just something to beautify our communities, but really it's a way of celebrating life, and in this case, Aboriginal life, and celebrating Aboriginal life in Toronto as well as Canada. The conversation to create an art project here in Allen Gardens began um, not necessarily because we wanted to create an art project, but it began because there was going to be a construction site um, located right in the heart of our community. And the downtown east is a community that I'm really proud to represent. Not only is it a beautiful historic community with a lot of wonderful people uh, who live and work and play and study in our neighborhoods, but we also wanted to make sure that when we do when we do construction projects at the City of Toronto, I'd like us to think about the ways we can give back to the community while we're on site building. What you see behind you is a very significant collaboration and it's a story about community building as much as it is a story about art. And uh, the artist uh, coordinators are going to come forward afterwards and they're going to tell you about their process. And I think that it's really worthwhile to sort of get a sense of how large this project is. It is literally two football fields in, like, in size in terms of dimension, 719 linear feet. That's over 5,600 square feet of boards. Now, that's a lot of paint, and that's a lot of hands that needed to put um, paint onto those brushes. And if you have ever tried to even cook with five people in a kitchen, I think that that sometimes is complicated. There's a saying, they say there's too many chefs in one kitchen. In this case, there wasn't enough artists to do the work. Um, and, uh, and they were able to thread together this amazing story that will stand here for the next three and a half years. I want to acknowledge certain dignitaries who are here today, uh, people who are part of our community. And, uh, and I will then say thank you to uh, a number of people who are part of this project. So first of all, I want to acknowledge the presence of Ryerson University. I want to also acknowledge the presence of our uh, agencies who've come forward, who I know uh, are here, uh, many of them serving our Aboriginal communities, uh, as well as uh, significant uh, property owners, as well as our residents, uh, both from uh, sometimes rooming houses, our TCHC buildings, as well as, uh, as our shelters. I also want to acknowledge the, uh, our fine officers from 51 Division, and it's all about creating collaboration making sure we have open dialogue so we can champion our neighborhoods together to keep it safe and to keep it clean and keep it beautiful and to make sure that it's affordable and inclusive at all times. This mural project would not have taken place without collaboration and the story of collaboration is a story of open dialogue and community building and open dialogue and community building doesn't take place unless you are very good listeners. I'm a little bit of a talker today and I have a long list of thank yous, but I think it's really important for me to name people who are involved with this project. And if we are able to tell our story well, the story of the process of building beautiful mural art in Toronto, perhaps all the other construction sites that you see in Toronto, our friendly dog, Perhaps all the other construction sites that you see in Toronto, either privately owned uh, with developers, and we've got a few developer friends who are here today, and um, both Diamond Core and Easton Group, as well as City of Toronto owned construction sites. We have to do better when we look at how we are beautifying our neighborhoods. And we know that when neighborhoods are beautiful and there's pleasure in place in our neighborhoods, people want to stay, they want to celebrate those spaces and they'll cherish it, which is why we are not seeing vandalism and graffiti. If this mural can withstand 
Sandy the Hurricane and take 20 boards off of sand, uh, 20, 20 boards, the remnants of that, that hurricane took off from our mural and quickly put back on, on with the hard work of our, our, uh, our, our artist coordinators. Uh, certainly I think that it can withstand just about anything, uh, anything that the city can generally throw at it. I want to acknowledge um, the collaborators who came together for all my relations, uh, it, the, the name of the mural. We need to say thank you to our elders, Elder Alex Jacob, Elder Dorothy Peters, Elder Andrew Wellesley. The elders came together to tell the story and the people, namely the artists and the youth, youth who listen, they took those stories and gave it visualization and it, and it gave it life. And uh, we know how important the, the this history of oral uh, storytelling is in the Aboriginal community. And I think the rest of us who are not part of the Aboriginal community can probably also learn from that. This project would not have happened without our artistic coordinators, award-winning, nationally recognized artists, Tannis Nielsen and Philip Cote. They have worked tirelessly. Now, I can have an idea, but that idea will not transform into action without people and hands on the ground. And I can tell you right now that the artist coordinators have worked tirelessly but they've also given themselves selflessly to this to this project they taught people how to paint if they didn't know how to paint and they brought people together and uh, and they were very very patient and very very giving of their time and energy and they've given above and beyond what we could ever be able to reimburse them for and this is now the testimony to their work the community artists who came together to help tell the story and there's a lot of them, so you're going to have to forgive me. I'm going to read these names, but I want you to sort of stand and, and, and think about who they are. If you're here, I want you to raise your hand, or to, if you're shy, um, just nod and know that we're here to acknowledge and thank you for your work. Rebecca Baird, Adrian Corey Charles, Graham Curry, Paula Gonzalez Olsa, Cote Harper, Stephen Henderson, Gary Johnson, Niall Johnson, Complex, uh, Brad Laducer. Gwen Lane, Lindsay Lickers, Angela Malley, Amanda Murray, Natasha Navo, Shelby Rain McDonald, Ron Razor, Judy Room, Honey Smith, Rosari Spence, Brianna Stone, Isaac Weber. They all deserve a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Our artists worked under conditions where the weather took real, literally all four seasons. What began as a sort of a winter discussion turned into a winter planning stage project and then it became a summer installation and execution under the hot sun when you and I were enjoying our summers off, they were painting for you and uh, well into the autumn and then finally into now close to winter. Uh, the, our community agencies, our community partners stood up and they said, yes, counselor, we want to do this. And, uh, and I have to say from the bottom of my heart, from Melissa Wong from my office and I, who's been the quarterback of the project, you've been seeing her name everywhere on every single email. Thank you, because without you, this would not have been possible. And that's the Native Women's Resource Center, uh, Crystal Mellon, Denise Booth, Ms. Whitbeek, Thunderbird Development Corporation, Nancy Martin, Jennifer Abbott, Anna Schnabe Health Toronto, Elder Dorothy Peters, and many students. The Association of Native, Native Development in Visual and Performing Arts, our trustee for the project. Council Fire, who generously donated their meeting space, and I know the meeting space in this neighborhood is a, is a scarcity. St. Luke's United Church, and Joanne Mastria Ani for the use of the church space. And, um, you know, when we talk about community collaboration, we went across the board. Residents, uh, business pro property owners, business owners, we wanted everyone involved. Uh, the City of Toronto has a number of other partners to thank, including technical service staff Oscar Arella, Cliff Chu, and Tony Pagnelli. Uh, CML, CNM McNally, uh, excuse me, CNL, CNM McNally Construction, they've been fantastic. And if you have any noise complaints or any complaints about dirt, they're right behind the boards. <laughs> and of course, they were very, very gracious in trying to help protect the boards uh, once they were up. And of course, EXP Consultants. As you can tell, not only is this a large art project in size, it is a large part 
our project in scope and in terms of partnership building. And if we are going to build a fantastic community together and build on top of what we already have, I can tell you that these community conversations will have to continue. So I want to thank you for being here, and I want to welcome to the front of this, the microphone uh, Philip Cote and Tannis Nielsen, who will now tell us about the project and the stories behind there. Okay. This one, I think we're off to a great start. You know, the artists were not paid very well. I mean, it was really an honorarium more than anything else. And we will continue to look for ways to continue to fund not just this project, but other projects. We've got to be able to do better and more at the City of Toronto. And I know that we have some private uh, partners in our, in our midst who could probably help us. Steve Diamond, who was here earlier, launched our very first War 27 public art mural project on his development site at 159 Wellesley. Michael Kavanoff has uh, painted hun um, not necessarily hundreds of bell light boxes with his uh, public art murals but every one of us large and small can contribute to ways of beautifying our city from picking up a piece of garbage to painting a construction board and uh, and I'll look forward to continuing that dialogue with you if there's an opportunity for the artist to come to the front of the mural perhaps we can take a photo including our artist coordinators uh, with Oscar with Melissa everyone everyone come on up I think it's fine to have a big group picture this is really a, a story about community building and uh, officers if you want to join us, let's all go there. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.